Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving absolute value inequalities in one variable. Now, there are two cases for absolute value inequalities in one variable. We I label this as case one and case two. For case one, this happens when the absolute value of A is greater than or equal to B. By the way, this can also be just greater than without the bar underneath. So whenever we have a greater than case for absolute value inequality, these are the conjunction that we're going to use would be or, which means that we're going to have A is greater than or equal to positive B or A is less than or equal to negative B. The other case, which is case two, whenever it's going to be less than or equal to. So if the absolute value of A is less than or equal to B, we're going to use the conjunction and, which means that A is greater than or equal to negative B and A is less than or equal to positive B. Or we, we can write this as A is greater than or equal to negative B, less than or equal to positive B. So just a reminder, uh, the case doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to have a bar underneath. It can just be all greater than. So that means we take all the bars off of these um, case. So again, it doesn't have to have a bar in all of these three. In some cases, there's no bar underneath. So that means we take all of the bars underneath. But again, there are two cases. The first case is whenever it's greater than. And the second case is whenever it's less than. Now, before we uh, jump into some examples, we remember the uh, important information on inequalities. <laughs> We remember that if we get a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, when we graph, we use a solid circle or we're going to use a bracket. And when we graph and the inequality is greater than or less than, we use an open circle or we are going to use a parenthesis. We're going to use these rules that we have here in graphing absolute value inequality in one variable. <laughs> Now let's take this example. Solve the inequality, graph the solution, and write the solution in interval notation. So this is read as two, absolute value of three X minus four is greater than 14. Now the first step that we're going to do in order that we can solve for absolute value inequality is to isolate the absolute value expression by itself on one side. So as you can see, absolute value is not isolated by itself on one side because there's two in front of it. So what are we going to do is we will divide both sides by two. So I'm going to divide this by two here. So then we are, we can cross the two out. So we're left with, um, it's going to be absolute value of 3x minus 4 is greater than 7 because we have um, 14 divided by 2 is 7. Now, this is a greater than, so which means that this is actually case 1. So case 1 is it's greater than. Again, there are two cases. Case 1 would be greater than or greater than or equal to, and case two is less than or less than or equal to. Since this is greater than, this belongs to the first case. So then I can go ahead and divide this into two parts. So it's gonna be these two. So I'll set it up, these two. So that would be, um, so I'm just gonna um, divide this into two right here. So as you can see here, we're going to have the A on one side. So the A here is 3x minus 4. So I'm going to write 3x minus 4. And then the first case would be greater than or, or, or equal to positive B. So since there's no bar underneath, I will keep all of the solutions to, to have no bar underneath. So this means this is greater than positive 7. So these are the two cases. So what I did was this was the A and this is our B. So then we go ahead and say that the first solution would be A. So I wrote the A 3x minus 4 greater than positive 7. Again, since there's no bar underneath, I keep all of them with no bar underneath because these two cases would be both for those with bar on them and no bar on them. So then I can go ahead and do the other one, the other solution on the other side right here. So that would be A. So I write the A that is 3x minus 4 and then it says it's less than 
so I, I keep the less than so we, with the, without bar underneath so that would be less than negative seven are the two solutions for the first case so then i can go ahead and do the math here so that would be a plus four so i'm going to add four to both sides so that i can isolate x by itself so then i cross this out I'm left with 3x is greater than 7 plus um, 4 is 11. So then I'm going to divide this um, both sides by 3. So I'll divide this by 3 and divide this by 3. So then I can cross this out. So I'm left with x is greater than 11 over 3. So this is the first solution. The other solution would come from this inequality right here. So what I would do is I will add um, 4 to both sides plus 4. So then we go ahead and cross the 4 out. So we're left with 3x is less than negative 7 plus 4 is a negative 3. So then I divide both sides by 3, divide this by 3. So then I can cross this out. So the other solution would be x is less than negative 1. So this is the solution. And again, these two are joined by conjunction or. So the solution would be x is greater than 11 over 3 or x is less than negative 1. So then we are going to graph this on the number line right here. So we start with x is greater than 11 over 3. 11 over 3 is 3.67. So if we divide it, 11 divided by 3 is 3.67. So that would be a positive. So it would, it would be somewhere around here. So 3.5 is halfway. So 3.67 should be a little above uh, uh, 3.5. So I can um, make an open circle here again that's open circles because there's no bar underneath so then i'm going to uh, draw a line to the right since the, the arrowhead is directed to the right and then the other solution would come from that's going to be x is less than negative one so negative one would be an open circle again and then it's going to go to the left because the arrowhead is directed to the left so then this would be the solution to the other part right here. So then if we label this, this is going all the way to negative infinity. This is go, uh, this stops at negative one. And then this one would be at um, 11 over three. And this is gonna go all the way to positive infinity. Um, solution for this in interval notation, because that's what it says here. So then we can go ahead and rewrite this as we start with the one on this side first. So the solution would come out that's going to be a uh, parenthesis negative infinity, then goes all the way to negative one. And then that's an open circle. So I'm going to use a parenthesis. And then this, the one in the middle here is not a solution. So it's not a solution. So that would be parenthesis since this is an open circle, 11 over three, and then it goes all the way to positive infinity. And then again, since these two are disjoint or they are not connected, so that means we are going to write the union between these two. Again, this is read as union. So in math, we represent letter U as union. Union means it's both of them. So it's like a combination of these two. So the solution on the uh, left, um, left, Part and the solution on the right part combined together. Now, here's the thing that we need to remember. The negative one here is not a solution since this is an open circle. And the 11 over 3 is also not a solution because it is an open circle. That means it's not included. But then anything less than negative 1 and anything greater than 11 over 3 are the solution. So this is our solution in interval notation. And this is our solution in graphing form. Now, I would like you to remember this. So the first case for an absolute value inequality whenever it's greater than, the shape of the graph on the number line will be two, um, it's gonna be two parts. The other one is going to the, directed to the left, and the other one is directed to the right. That's the first case every time. And the, uh, again, the conjunction is or. So there's going to be two graphs that are going in opposite direction. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. 
Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, the first step when we solve this is to isolate the absolute value expression by itself on one side. So as you can see here, there's like three and four on the left side of the inequality. So what are we gonna do is we are going to clear this out. So then that's part of the first step. We already have isolated the absolute value expression on one side. Now we are going to move on to the second step. Apply one of the two cases. It's either case one or case two. So in this case right here, we go back to the cases that we, uh, we talked about. So I'm just gonna cover this part here. Again, remember that the first case is greater than the second case is less than. So this will, since this is less than, this belongs to the second case. So then we go ahead and use this case that we have here, this rule that we have here in solving for the solution to this inequality. I'm going to use this one already because I already cleared four and the three. So then we are left with the absolute value inequality on one side. So then I can go ahead and uh, rewrite this. So that would be, absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than equal to 3. So then there are two solutions for this. So the first part right here would be, so the a here, by the way, is 2x plus 1. So I'm going to write the first solution that would be, uh, again, the a. So that, that would be 2x plus 1. The first case is greater than or equal to negative b. So again, this is the a. This is the b. So I wrote the a. Then I'm going to write the greater than equal to negative b. So that would be a negative 3. Okay, so I just set it up. I just uh, I just plugged in the value. So again, that's the A, that's the B. So then I plugged in everything. I copied everything. I plugged in the A, and then it's uh, greater than or equal to the negative B. So that's a 3, so I put a negative 3. So then I can go ahead and do the math here. So this is our first solution. Now the second solution would come from the other part right here. So I'm just going to divide this. So it's going to come from here. So again, this is our A, this is our B. So I'm, I'm going to plug it in here. Our A again is 2x plus 1 and then less than equal to our B is 3, but that's a positive 3. So this is the other solution and these are joined by the conjunction and. So I'm just going to go ahead and write and, which means that the solution is x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 1. Now there is another way to uh, solve for this. So I'm just going to write the other option. The other option could come from this one. So then I can go ahead and say that our a, so if we, if I rewrite this equation right here, that would be a is greater than or equal to the negative b and then less than or equal to positive b. Our a again is 2x plus 1. So I go ahead and write 2x plus 1 as the a greater than equal to our b is 3, but that's a negative b, so I write negative 3. And then that's a positive b, so that would be um, a positive 3. So then it's pretty much the same thing with a compound inequality. We are going to subtract 1 to the 3 sides. So then this would um, come out, so we can cross this out. So we're left with 2x is greater than equal to negative 4, less than equal to 3 minus 1 is 2. So then we want x by itself in the middle. So we divide 2 from both sides, divide 2 and divide 2. So then we can cross this out. We're left with x is greater than equal to 
negative 2 or less than equal to 1. So this is our solution to this inequality. So either of these two, this one had been talked in um, the previous video on compound inequality part two. So feel free to look at that video to, to, to see that video, how this works. But these are the two solutions. So then we are now ready to uh, graph this um, inequality. So let's start with this one right here. X is greater than equal to negative two. So negative two is right here since we say that it's greater than, I mean, greater than or equal to. So then this is going to be a closed circle. And then direction of the arrow is going to the right all the way to infinity. Well, the other solution is um, on uh, positive one, but it's going to be a closed circle as well because there's a bar underneath. So positive one is a closed circle. And then the direction of the arrow is going to the left. So I will have to uh, uh, draw an arrow to the left. Now, as you can see that these two blue and red graphs are actually intersecting in the middle. So we are looking for the intersection between these two uh, blue and red um, graph. And it's actually in the middle. So actually the solution is in the middle. Now others are going to say, why can't we say that this is a solution? This is only a solution for um, when x is greater than negative 2. But it, it's not a solution when x is less than 1. So what are we trying to say is it has to be both red and blue. This is just a solution for the blue part and this is just a solution for the red part. We want the solution for both. It works for both of these um, two equations. So then we go ahead and it's actually in the middle. So then we have here a negative. Um, this one right here is negative 2 and this one right here is 1. So then we can go ahead and express our solution in interval notation. That would be a bracket on negative 2 since that's a closed circle. And it's going to be a bracket on positive 1 since that is a closed circle. So this is our solution in interval notation. This is our solution in graph form. Now going back to the two cases here, the first case is... Um, the graph of the first case is uh, two graphs that are going away from each other. Now, the second case is actually whenever we have two graphs that are intersecting the one in the middle. So this is how the graph is going to look like for a less than case, which is case two. And this is the graph for case one whenever we have a greater than um, absolute value inequality. And each of these will always come up with this type of graph, just like how we did here with case number two. Did you get the same answers as this? Good, perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.